Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. Madam Clerk, we have no regrets. Council, do we have any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, I see none. Uh, Council, a mover and seconder to resolve in a committee of the whole is in order. Councilor O'Mara, Councilor Duddock, all in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. And for the public's benefit, Planning and Development Council meets in what's called Committee of the Whole in order to permit more extensive public consultation and uh, a little bit of a relaxed uh, rural uh, environment. Um, we have no publicly listed consent items for this agenda, but we do have a confidential consent item for which there is a delegation registered. And uh, that item is C1, Ontario Municipal Board Appeal of Minor Variance Application respecting 472 Jeanette. Madam Clerk, would you call the listed delegation, please? Call on Linda Morgan to speak to this item. Ms. Morgan, welcome to the council. And if uh, that's right, and if you'll speak more or less at that microphone, we'll be able to hear you. Great. And council's looking forward to your information. Great. Thank you very much. Good evening, Your Worship, members of council. My name is Linda Morgan. I live at 494 Jeanette Drive, just down the street from 472 Jeanette Drive. Uh, myself and my neighbors uh, are here this evening. To, in regards to C1 on the agenda, we realize that this is uh, not privy, that we are not privy to what is being discussed in camera. Uh, however, we did want to take this opportunity to provide you with a little bit of insight from the neighborhood perspective. Uh, currently, I'm representing, as I speak with you tonight, the, not only my neighbors here in the room, but also 20 people who have signed a petition uh, that supports our, our proposal here. And uh, we are appealing the Committee of Adjustment decision regarding 472 Jeanette Drive uh, as stated that it's uh, to permit a detached dwelling with a maximum residential floor area ratio of 46.3%. That is in fact 5.3% larger than zoning bylaw 2014-014. What I'd like to do, just to uh, in, in, uh, give you a little bit of background, uh, there are two handouts that, I'm that I have presented to you that you can reference as I proceed. And what I would like to do, in addition to the handouts, is provide you with our insight around uh, three contradictions that we see in this decision. The first contradiction is around the topic of aesthetics. Uh, so the builder presentation uh, and the reason for their application was in fact based on the aesthetics. So you can take a look at the actual photograph and see the roof line. Uh, what the uh, proposal by the, the builder was, was to build an additional uh, dormer over top the double garage, uh, which would then put the uh, building over the um, bylaw limit. The town was represented uh, with the planning department, and I'm going to quote, uh, which is also in your uh, handouts. Uh, they quoted in terms of their denial, why they denied this request. Uh, quote, the requested variance provides for an increase in the massing of the proposed dwelling, which presents a negative impact on the abutting residential uses and the streetscape. The proposed development does not maintain or protect the existing character of the surrounding neighborhood. So that's from your planning department. I have to say we had six, member, six uh, neighbors in attendance, three of whom spoke, three of whom also agreed with the town. So the contradiction here is, uh, from our perspective, is does the bylaw not dictate what the quote unquote aesthetic should be? Otherwise, decisions, decisions like this are based so, solely on subjectivity and not on uh, fact. The second key contradiction that I'd like to introduce is uh, the fear of retribution by the Committee of Adjustment from the Ontario Municipal Board. Uh, there were six committee members present at that particular meeting and two were opposed and two were for the, uh, the approval. And the chair was one of the people who uh, submitted, he was the one who actually brought the, um, the proposition forward. There was one vote and through the participation and the discussion that, pr that ensued uh, prior to the decision being made, uh, there was one um, committee member, Mr. Talowski, I, I, I beg your pardon if I've mispronounced his name, but Mr. Talowski was definitely uh, indicating through his participation that he did oppose this particular um, decision, but at the very end, uh, he changed his vote to the surprise of the chair himself who asked him to specifically indicate why he had chosen and swayed in that direction. 
His response was that uh, he had uh, concerns that they would oppose it. It would go then to the Ontario Municipal Board and be tossed back at them. So my concern with that and our concern as a neighborhood is who is responsible for upholding the intention of the bylaws. If they are afraid of the OMB, uh, we have submitted on our behalf at quite uh, a bit of time, resource, and financial expense to ourselves, and should this not be the job of the Committee of Adjustment. So uh, I also want to reference, um, I pulled this off the website, uh, and this is directly indicating what the mandate of the Committee of Adjustment is. Uh, there, the last two are in particular the ones I'd like to draw your attention to, and this is specifically quoted from the uh, website. The committee must ensure that the variances, if approved, satisfy the following. And the two that are of particular interest is that the, um, the variance must generally maintain the intent and, and purpose of the official plans and generally maintain the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. In this case, the representation from the building committee, uh, the town building committee, uh, indicated that this was not the case, that the intention, the, the recommendation by the city, the town, pardon me, was to deny in order to uphold that intention. So that was not done. Last but not least, the other uh, contradiction is about the enforceability of the decision around the subject clause. So there was um, a subject that was allocated and associated with the particular uh, decision, and that quote again, that approved residential floor area variance above the garage not be converted into a usable or livable space. So even though we do not do agree with this position, how would this possibly be enforced? Uh, so just as an example, the variant signage that is supposed to be on this property still, because we are still under appeal, it is not there, has not been there since July. Nobody enforces that. So how do we as neighborhood um, know that this will in fact be enforced? So in summation, we as a neighborhood do not believe that the Committee of Adjustment fulfilled its mandate, which is clearly stated on the website, nor did they fulfill the responsibility to us, the neighborhood, or the town in terms of upholding the intention of the bylaws. We do believe that this, pre that this decision will set precedent for other builders to push the limits of these bylaws, in particular take advantage of times when these by bylaws are under appeal, such as this one is uh, in current state. We also believe that progress is actually good for our neighborhood, only when it adheres to the intent and the purpose of the overall Oakville livable plan. We also believe that you here have it in your hands to make the right decision and to take our concerns into consideration as you go in in camera session. So I'd like to thank you again for your time and are there any questions? tonight no it's working thank you and appearing tonight I think it's very important that all members of council get the benefit of hearing directly from the residents in the area who are most impacted by what is taking place um, you and I had a chance to walk the neighborhood and you had shown me some of the builds that had taken place in the uh, the neighborhood and I guess when you and I were talking I had a sense that this was beyond the saturation point. In other words, it's, it's the tipping point of what the existing neighborhood could take in terms of massing and development. Would that be correct? Absolutely. Let me clarify a little bit uh, to that point as well. Um, most of the builds, and I am currently, I apologize, I was not fully, um, not fully finished my research in time for this meeting as I am preparing for the OMB meeting on January 12th of next year. But I'm currently researching the actual number of variances that have been approved around our neighborhood uh, because I personally, I would say that the majority of the builds have not gone through without at least a minimum of one variance been approved. So my question is, why have the bylaws? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? Thank you for your information. We'll go into camera. I don't think it'll be for very long to consider this, and we'll come out and make a decision in public. So um, 
uh, or at least I'm assuming we'll go into camera. Let me find out if we're going. Uh, it's moved by Councillor Duddick that we go into camera to consider um, uh, advice subject to the solicitor client privilege and the matter uh, concerning litigation or potential litigation with the town under uh, Section 239. Thank you. So, so thank you. Uh, I need a vote now. All in favor? Opposed to Finney. That carries. So we beg your pardon, and we'd like you to uh, excuse yourselves from the council chamber for five minutes. Uh, let me see how big a uh, how big a difference from five or ten minutes it will be. All right, I'm calling the public session into back to order and uh, to the public I'll say uh, it may have been a touch longer than the 10 minutes that I hoped we would limit it to but uh, thankfully it wasn't too much longer and the chair recognizes Councillor Duddick. Thank you your worship. Um, I would like to move the following that the town take a position before the Ontario Municipal Board with respect to the appeal by a neighbor of Committee of Adjustment Decision A126 2015472 Jeanette Drive. What um, I think you might want to specify the position in there. I didn't hear. In support. In support. Of, okay. In support. Correct. Of the appeal. Correct. Thank you. Uh, Council, is there discussion? Councilor Elgar, discuss. No, it's a question for staff uh, through you, Mr. Chair. I wonder if staff can explain to me uh, how the official plan ties into the zoning related to this issue of floor space. Through you, Your Worship, to Councillor Elgar, um, we, in reviewing the applications to the Committee of Adjustment, um, rely on the uh, guidelines for stable residential communities, which are referenced in the official plan, uh, Section 1119. The guidelines deal with um, how variances to um, the zoning bylaw are supposed to be dealt with, dealing with massing, et cetera. So that's how the tie is within the official plan. The official plan itself for this area is a low density residential area. So all of the policies that relate to low density are, are in effect, but we, we tend to look at the guidelines for stable residential areas. So what are, what are you saying? Does that mean, say it's 41%, 46%, uh, 50%? Like what, uh, what does that mean? The, uh, Again, through your worship to Councillor Elgar, what we uh, looked at was the effect on, on the massing of the building. And when you're, again, you, when you're dealing with the massing of the building here, um, what was, it, we're dealing with a matter of one dormer. And so from a streetscape perspective, et cetera, it's not, it's not a huge change. And we, through the discussion at the meeting, that's what the, uh, the evidence that was presented. And again, we, we're not denying we recommended against the original, but uh, we didn't think it was a matter, matter of significant interest to get the municipality involved. So the, the matter then, before said, the official plan is fine with this? Like it, it supports uh, the additional uh, square footage? Again, through you, your worship to Councillor Algar, we have concluded um, that based on the evidence that we have, the one test was was an issue but based on the discussion at the meeting the test was the zoning bylaw uh, we're, f we're fine with not uh, proceeding with the uh, we're recommending the appeal at this point in time it's up to council though any other discussion or questions shall I put oh Councillor O'Meara sorry I just I have a, a question about the character of the neighborhood and I'm wondering how um, um, well how that's objectively defined and I'm also wondering how many minor variances before it changes the character of the neighborhood, or when does a, ma a minor become a major from a, a planning perspective? Uh, I guess, is there sort of variance creep that all of a sudden changes the character of a neighborhood? And at what point do flags go up and say, okay, this is the decision where we're changing the character of a neighborhood? Or with these three on a street combined, we're changing the character of the neighborhood? I think we heard from the delegation that this is a bit of a tipping point where they feel the character of their neighborhood has changed. And I'm wondering how where the line is that we draw between minor and, and, and enough minors equal a change of character in the neighborhood. Through you, uh, worship to Councillor O'Meara, that's a very, very tough question, and that's one of the, the things that's going to be debated at this Ontario Municipal Board hearing. Um, we, are, we know that this particular neighbourhood is a neighbourhood in transition. There's a lot of rebuilds that have occurred in this neighbourhood, and we've heard that many of them have required minor variances. There are some particular neighbourhoods in this town where 
one particular application is coming forward for a variance in a neighborhood where this is the first application. And clearly that built form is completely different than the character that's there. Uh, this one is going to be a very interesting debate if it gets there, um, depending upon what you want to do with town staff, but uh, it is a neighborhood in transition. Councillor Dedek. Um, just speaking to my motion, um, the neighbors were extremely pleased and grateful that the town was supportive of denying the application. Um, and it spoke to, again, going back to the official plan with protecting sta uh, stable residential neighborhoods, which was a real cornerstone of our official plan, as many of you remember. And it was interesting because in this particular situation, um, staff did a thorough evaluation of the types of development that had been approved in the area. So this was not just a one-up. They looked at the whole thing. And they felt that 46% was a considerable increase and not minor. And they felt that the requested increase in the maximum GFA gross floor um, area would result in the mass of the home having a negative impact on the abutting residential uses and the streetscape. And it would not be in keeping with the existing character of the surrounding neighborhood. And that is paramount in this case. It has been in transition, but we're now to the tipping point, and I'm concerned about the type of precedent we're setting where some of these monster homes are going in uh, and taking over neighborhoods. So I would appreciate uh, council's support. Any speakers against? Additional, I'll put the vote then. All those in favor of Councillor Dedek's motion? Any opposed? Councillor Dedek, your motion carries. Council, item C2 has been withdrawn, so we have no other confidential uh, consent item for this, this evening. And that brings us to our discussion item, the Downtown Plan Implementation Supplementary Report. And uh, I think I'm going to direct your attention to the Commissioner to uh, play Master of Ceremonies over there. <laughs> uh, Mayor and members of Council, you have in your agenda uh, the item on the Downtown Plan. Uh, the purpose of this meeting, you, uh, if you recall from the October 5th meeting, you had deferred just item number one or uh, recommendation number one, which included A to D, to this November session. All of the other items related to the downtown cultural hub have that been deferred off into March. Um, so it is just really this one item that we're dealing with tonight. And Dan uh, Cozy has a brief presentation on um, the lake shore and the analysis of the three options. It's a repeat from the previous presentation, but we thought it would be worthwhile just at a very high level to highlight those. Thank you, Ms. Closey. Uh, good evening, Mayor Burton, members of council. Um, purpose of my presentation tonight, it will be brief. It's really just to refresh you on the uh, work that was done in the previous report presented to you in October and to provide you with an update with regards to a component of the project, which is the Lakeshore Road Bridge. Uh, just to sum up, in April of this year, uh, Council approved the uh, Downtown Transportation and Streetscape Master Plan, as well as the preferred streetscape option for Lakeshore Road. And you approved that we commence the detailed design work for Lakeshore Road. I can tell you that that work has started. We've retained the firm of Marshall Macklin Monaghan. Uh, we have some very good senior staff working on the project, and uh, we've been working away at it since uh, the beginning of August. Uh, you also provided uh, the following direction to us. You asked us to develop alternatives for phasing of the construction of Lakeshore Road for your consideration and that the results of the phasing uh, alternatives be presented to you uh, in the fall of this year. Just a, a photo of the approved option. We're, we're all remembering that. And the three options that we presented to you back a month ago um, were to, one, to move forward uh, as quickly as possible, which meant a 2017 construction start date over two years. That option included the rehabilitation of the Lakeshore Road Bridge as a package project. Second option was to move forward and rehabilitate the existing road platform only as soon as possible, defer the streetscape 
which is the boulevards and the parking lanes, until a later date. Under this option, the, uh, the um, rehabilitation of the Lakeshore Road Bridge would, would have proceeded in around 2017 uh, at the same time as the re road rehabilitation. And option three was to defer the streetscape and reconstruction project entirely until uh, 2019. Uh, would start in 2019 over two years, including the bridge. Um, but in the, in the interim, we would carry out some interim pavement repairs at selected intersections and selected locations downtown just to get the roadway through the next four years because uh, there are sections that are, are in uh, uh, poor condition. The option that we recommended to you was option three, to defer the streetscape until 2019. Um, we would move forward as part of our road resurfacing and preservation program to carry out some minor selected pavement repairs in 2016 uh, at a cost of between $200,000 and $350,000. Uh, and we would proceed in 2019 with the re reconstruction of the streetscape, including the bridge. And you'll see a red asterisk there, and I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, and a two-way road conversion would occur in either 2016 or 2017. Um, the intersections um, that we're talking about re, uh, repairing in the interim are generally the ones east of Navy Street. In this slide, we actually show the Allen Street intersection. Not so sure that intersection deserves much attention. It's not that bad, but certainly the intersections between Reynolds and Thomas need attention. Uh, and this just is an illustration of the, the phasing. Uh, we were going to go from west of the bridge to Dunn Street in uh, year one and from Dunn Street to Allen Street in year two. So the uh, Lakeshore Road Bridge. And, uh, and information recently came to light to staff uh, through our consultant. That indicates there is a greater sense of urgency to move forward on the bridge, the bridge rehab itself. Uh, within the last few weeks, our consultant has undertaken more detailed inspections of the bridge revealing significantly advanced deterioration of the bridge deck and also that the steel box girders which are supporting the deck uh, are experiencing significant corrosion loss internally. Um, this means that the bridge rehab will have to proceed earlier than 2019 and therefore uh, would move forward as a separate project before the, uh, the streetscape and reconstruction project as outlined in recommended option uh, three. Uh, what we want to do is have uh, some further work done in analyzing the situation with the bridge and we'd like to, well, not like to, we will report back to you uh, with details uh, of the project. I believe we'll be commencing in around 2017 with the bridge rehab and we're going to look at uh, how we could go ahead and do this. Uh, there's some discussion on whether we need to look at the girders, uh, whether we could replace them or re re repair them. Uh, that work will be conducted in the coming months. So we'll be back before this council uh, probably as early as possible in the year with a plan. And that's basically uh, all I wanted to do to uh, provide this update is to let you know that uh, it's option three, 2019-2020, and uh, is what we're recommending, but we're going to have to move forward on the bridge sooner. Thank you, Mr. Cozy. Council, if there are no questions, we'll go to the listed delegation on this item. Madam Clerk, would you call the delegation? Uh, yes, I'm, I call upon uh, Charlene Pluman, Executive Director of the Downtown Oakville BIA. Ms. Pluman, welcome. Council looks forward to uh, your information. Uh, I almost feel like saying, may we have the envelope, please. <laughs> what, uh, when we last talked to you, you, were, you wanted this time to consult your members. What have you learned? Uh, so we did do a poll of our members. I think he uh, pulled this up. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me here tonight. So we did poll the members. Uh, we do want to thank Council for giving us that time to poll the members. We do appreciate that opportunity. It did allow us to do a survey that we delivered both by hand and by uh, email twice. And it represented three options, and I apologize. They were listed in reverse from what Mr. Cozy just listed. So option one being 2019, the full thing. Uh, option two, 2017, roadbed only. And option three, roadbed in 20, or sorry, full thing in 2017. So drum roll, we had 51% show a preference for 2019, the full streetscape. Um, this does come with the understanding that um, everybody still wants parking solved. They still want a garage somehow. They understand the results of the report, but somehow they'd like to see a garage done. So um, with that in mind, 
they indicated 2019 as a 51% preference. We had a 25% response rate, which is reasonably high by most survey standards. That does, though, give us a 10% plus or minus accuracy, so we can understand that it could be anywhere from 41% to 61% that would prefer 2019. The other two there are basically tied, so the 2017 just do the roadbed at 25% and 2017 do the full meal deal at 24%, so pretty much a tie for the other two options. Um, we do request that no matter when the implementation happens that it does uh, proceed with a plan for success. So I've indicated parking as a you know, way to solve some of their concerns and then along with that um, let's allocate the right funds. The BIA is already starting to set aside some funds so we can have additional marketing support during this time and we're hoping the town is prepared to do the same. We would look to have some all allocation of funds to alleviate the losses. Various towns have done this in various ways, whether it be lower no interest loans and, and you know, tax breaks, what have you. Um, applicate, applying the best practices for construction risk mitigation. Let's make sure this happens and happens smoothly and as easily as we can possibly make it by learning from others. And, you know, let's use proper phasing to make sure that it doesn't disrupt the businesses any more than it has to. If we do this right, a lot of the concern about timing goes away. The concern about timing is people don't want to lose their business, they don't want to lose their income, they've invested money in this, and they are stressed that it will go away, and I think we have, you know, seen evidence that it would likely happen. So if we can take most of that stress away, I know it's impossible to take it all, take it away, make it so that these businesses can get through this, they can come out and still be there and existing, and everyone is happy. We had uh, indicated earlier, and I just would wish to reiterate, there are some factors that we'd ask we can implement now. Uh, in speaking with Mr. Cozy, I recognize there may be some issues with some things um, that might need to be built in, but other things like garbage receptacles and things that can just be put in place and moved around, um, we'd love to have these happen sooner than later. Um, it just helps to compete with other areas, helps to show people that we are staying current and vibrant and that things are moving. Um, the budget's already there. Let's just make it happen. Lifespan for things like a metal garbage can is 10 years. If we're looking five years down the road to start this construction, we would still have these new items for five years at least after that. So I think things like that we can just make happen. Uh, you know, let's Wi-Fi the downtown. There has to be buildings who are willing to put towers on their roof to make this happen. Let's do some of these things now to show people that we are investing in their downtown. So 2019 is the verdict, and uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you. Thank you very much for your information, Ms. Plusen, and for opening the envelope. Uh, Councillor Adams has a question. Thank you for the envelope, and uh, given the late breaking news about the bridge, uh, do you have any comments for us on um, how that moving forward would impact uh, how you believe people would view the construction on Lakeshore, the rest of Lakeshore, I should right. say? Um, I don't think people are going to love the idea. However, I do applaud the town. I think the construction on the Rebecca Street Bridge has happened well. Um, I travel it every day, and I've yet to be delayed by the construction happening there. So my hope is a similar um, setup could happen where delays are minimal because of the bridge work. Um, I don't know the extent of the difference between the Rebecca Street and the Lakeshore and how possible it is to do a similar phasing where the bridge stays open the whole time. But you know, again, if it's done well and done right, then, you know, not a problem. Um, but if it is going to impact traffic flow so that we've got less people in 2017 and then again an impact in 2019, that'll be less than well received. Okay, that's great. It's obviously not right in front of the stores. Maybe our staff could clarify the question about the uh, ability to maintain traffic flow. Uh, through you, uh, uh, Mayor Burton. I mean, obviously, we're going to be looking into this in the coming months. Uh, I can tell you that, yes, the, the bridge can be rehabilitated and, and, and maintained. Uh, the question becomes uh, the timing. If we were to close it, for example, we could pr probably get it done easily within one construction season. If we were to maintain traffic and do it in two phases, it would occur over two years. And that was, you know, that's how we worked it in to the, uh, to the previous project. It was either one year if we closed it, and we thought, felt, well, if Lakeshore Road is going to be closed, maybe we can close the bridge. What's the difference? Uh, or if we maintain it as open. Um, the work, though, could be a little bit more significant than uh, what's happening at Rebecca, especially if the, the girders come into play. Um, but, uh, yeah, it can be phased. Uh, there's question as to whether uh, we can maintain, in both phases, pedestrian access. I think we could definitely maintain traffic and pedestrian in one phase, 
The second phase, it may only just be traffic. And we'll, again, we'll report back to council with these details as soon as it's available. Thank you, Mr. Cozy. <coughs> Councillor Giddings. I assume, Councillor Adams, you're done? That's for you, Mr. Berg. 25% uh, response rate. Any sense of whether that was from the breakdown between retail along Lakeshore versus offices on side streets? Just curious if you have any sort of feel for that. We, we don't. We um, have it set up so it's an anonymous survey um, so that people do feel comfortable to give their um, full feedback and not feel like they'll be, you know, judged or discriminated. So it is completely anonymous. So, we, you know, I can't say for sure. There was, of, the, of that response, there was about 25% of the respondees who indicated a comment along with it. And most of those comments lead me to believe they're, you know, front street facing, you know, retail or restaurants, but it's a guess based on how they worded their comments. So the true answer is I can't tell you the breakdown. Fair enough. Thanks. Councillor O'Meara. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Ms. Plum and I, um, from what I heard in your presentation, you said the downtown BIA has already started to put some funds away for the marketing and for this sort of thing. Um, and then I also note in your presentation that you're asking the town right away to put in new garbage cans and benches. So I'm just wondering why the downtown BIA couldn't do that with the funds they're putting away right now. The, uh, the level is just, it's much too high for us to cover all in one year on our own. We'd be saving for years to get to that. So when we look at the plans that the town had described, part of what was described was putting in new streetscape features like a garbage can. So if the money is set aside as a part of the 8.4 million in the budget, it seems like it's just a shuffle of, you know, a couple hundred thousand of that to cover the, the receptacles. Thank you very much, Ms. Plumman, for your information. Oh, Councillor Giddings? Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to say I'd be happy to move the staff recommendation once the questions are completed. Thank you. I'll go back to thanking Ms. Pluson. Thank you. The chair recognizes Councillor Giddings. Thank you. I'd be happy with uh, uh, moving the staff recommendation that's before us. Thank you, Councillor Giddings. Discussion? All in favor? Uh, Councillor O'Meara. Sorry, I did have one more question for Mr. Cozy. Um, with the information we heard today about the need to rehabilitate the bridge um, sooner, I'm wondering what financial implications there may be in terms of now splitting up what was going to be Lakeshore Road to Dunn Street Phase 1 and now adding another phase in there. Is it going to cost more to do it in, in different phases or, uh, or does it matter at all? Um, through you, Mayor Burton, uh, that's a fair question, Councillor Ramira. I, I don't think it's going to affect the overall cost of the project. These are two entirely different types of civil uh, construction works. The reason we were packaging the projects together from the get-go was to ease, for the, for the convenience, for the sake of the downtown businesses, we thought it would be great if we could go in there and do both projects at the same time. That was always our intent, uh, but there are two different types of contractors that are going to be doing this work. Uh, in essence, they'd almost be a sub to a general that, that you know, one that kind of doesn't do windows and the other one that does do windows, right? Councillor Duddick? Yes. Councillor Giddings? Uh, further question, Mr. Cozy, just uh, the motions before us, does that give you the information that you require for the bridge rehab? Just want to... I, Make I sure think that if it's covered I, through you, Mayor Burton, I, I, if I may, I would suggest that um, uh, perhaps you add a motion approving the uh, phasing of the work uh, by saying that staff and that further that staff report back on the uh, with more details on the um, uh, rehabilitation of the Lakeshore Road Bridge at 60 Mile Creek as soon as possible, uh, understanding that it would move b ahead of the of the uh, road construction. And your timing for coming back on that is the two to three months? Uh, early, I would say quarter one in, uh, in the new year, sometime in Q1. Mm -hmm. so, incorporate that in the motion. so Mr. Mayor, maybe incorporate that in the revised motion. I, I noticed the clerk got that perfectly on the first go. See that smile of satisfaction? <laughs> I'll put the vote now if everyone agrees. Councillor Adams? So I, can, I, I may never put the vote. You may, you know, you will. Uh, 
on on one D, the funding implementation of the downtown cultural hub master plan phase one in 2016. I just want to confirm for our staff that they're going to come back to us with the outcome of the first step um, on the the piece that the is the hundred thousand dollar piece before proceeding with the next component. Is that right? We'll approve the full funding availability for next year, but it allows us to consider what to do in the second phase of it. Uh, through you, you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we were going to report on the overall procurement process in March, but the intent was that we would only be doing the market sounding first if you determine that in March, and then reporting back after that before proceeding any further with procurement. Great. Thank you very much. One more time. Shall I put the vote? All in favor? Opposed? It carries. Councillor Giddings, you've got a unanimous on that. Council, I, I invite you to turn to item number two in the discussion item list, the Brownfield Redevelopment Strategy. Is there, um, are there questions for staff from the, from the very adequate report that we have there? Because if there are, we have staff here for your questions. Councilor O'Meara. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, my question relates to sort of, I guess it starts from the 2013 report that we had on the initial, you know, do we do an area, area wide um, um, brownfield redevelopment strategy or CPI or do we do a specific area and, and at the time in 2013 the specific area was looking at Midtown. And, and that seemed to be um, the, the area that we we're looking at. However, the report in 2013 said the real major areas were Spears Road, Wycroft South Service Road. However, there seemed to be an impetus or a priority to focus on the Midtown because of our planning directions and our strategic goals at the time. Um, so I'm wondering if anything's changed since 2013. I'm wondering why we're still going with this hybrid model, if you might be able to shed some light on why we're not doing an area-wide uh, approach to CPI or, or, uh, or, or sort of maybe just put in place the reason why we're still sticking with a hybrid model, um, which would seem to still be addressing the Midtown area um, and maybe not looking so much at the Spears and Wycroft and South Service Road areas. Through you, Mayor Burton. Actually, we are doing an area-wide study. Um, and it doesn't say it in the recommendations. The report from 2013 came from a consultant that we engaged to take a look at whether or not we should undertake an area-specific study for Midtown or look at, um, look at an area-wide. Um, his recommendation was that you could do a hybrid model. That would incorporate an area-wide study but you could also look at other recommendations that could be incorporated into a CIP for the redevelopment of Midtown, if you so choose. So um, the, the study that we will be looking at is area-wide. Well, that was the best answer you could have given me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor O'Meara. Any other questions? Councillor O'Meara, are you happy enough to move it? Absolutely. Thank you. It's duly moved. Shall I put the vote? All in favor? Opposed, if any. And that also carries in. You too want a unanimous decision. Is that something in boxing? All right, Council. Item number three, 1187 Burnham Thorpe Road East. Notice of intention to demolish. Councillor Duddock. I'd be pleased to move the item, and I'd like to uh, acknowledge the Trafalgar uh, historical uh, committee for their um, effort in terms of providing some input into this. And I think it uh, created a great place to land on a very sort of depressing outcome. Thank you, Councillor Duddock. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed, if any? That's three in a row there. Uh, now, uh, uh, the advisory committee minutes of Heritage Oakville are before you or distributed to you. Where shall I look for a motion? Councillor Duddock. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That carries. I wonder if we could have a motion to rise and report to Council. Councillor Adams, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? That carries. I rise and report the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on confidential consent item C1, discussion items 1, 2, and 3, and advisory committee minutes item 4 as noted by the clerk. I need a mover and seconder for my report. Councillor O'Meara, Councillor Hutchins, all in favor? Opposed, if any. Thank you. That carries. Um, 
Is there new business of an emergency congratulatory or condolence nature? If none, I have one. Earlier today, we received the official resignation of our colleague, Councillor Pam DeMoff, and uh, we wish her the best in her new career as a member of the new parliament. I understand she's going to be sworn in sometime in the next week and a half or so, and, uh, and I'm sure she'll be back to receive our good wishes and our parting gift. Uh, the, uh, uh, that's the only item I had for tonight. And uh, if there are no other, I'll look for a mover and seconder for the bylaws. Councillor Hutchins, Councillor Robinson, thank you. All in favor? Opposed to Finney. And that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that carries. And uh, that completes our agenda. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And we are adjourned. It's been great working with you.